right, we're getting ready to go here this morning. Yesterday afternoon, we made three major things that we needed for the shaper to be able to cut this key, uh, which we we needed this because the the length of stroke would have been too long for the jumping jack head or the broaching head for the K and T, and um, I didn't have a three quarter inch broach. That's what the width of the key is that we're putting in. So having this already here and set up, it was short time, especially with the plasma cam. We were able to go ahead and cut out a resting support or holding support uh, for this hub and lets us tilt it and we're getting ready. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to dial that in. But before we do that, I just wanted to show you that we created a hold or support for the part. We quickly knocked out a, um, a resting foot, which goes with I have <clears throat> the resting foot that was um, made for this uh, shaper was missing when I got it, and I never had one. But this job we're overhanging here, and I'm <clears throat> you know I'm I'm gonna be wanting to get into some some cuts and some parts where I want to go ahead and I'm going to be creating some pressure and throwing some big chips hopefully and <clears throat> anyway this uh, is just a makeshift uh, support nice one inch coarse uh, thread here I machined the bottom of this foot here the nut and you can grab this with a wrench and then you can set this up here because what you want to do is you want to set it firm uh, but you don't want it dragging I mean you don't want excess pressure dragging around there. It's basically it's just to take up that space and it and it on hogging cuts and heavy cuts. It um, it allows you um, not to have any flex on the rest of your your uh, machine here, the ways and all of that. All right, so we got that fixed, and I'm just leaving this loose right now because we're going to be doing some adjusting up and down, and and I want plenty of clearance in here. Um, the last thing I made was a bar that uh, is going to hold our bit that's going to go through. And uh, they, I made it so it's long enough to come on through the part all the way. Here's the bit right here at the end. Okay. And it comes back. Now, I'm going to go ahead and move the ram back because I... <clears throat> Let me go ahead and get you in another position here. Okay, there's a couple adjustments on... I, I just knocked this loose with my uh, rawhide mallet. This actually lets you have an adjustment of sliding where you want the ram to ha be during the duration, whether you want it to be at this end of the stroke, this end of the stroke, or anywhere in between. All right, so you can also slide your your ram back, and then it gives you room to get in here and um, uh, pull. We're going to pull a bar out of here, and then I'll show you the. Uh, Part. I, I drilled a hole in it so I can hold the bars from rotating or adjust it and then tighten it back down. Alright, and we'll also have to pull out our, our bit here so our nut will slide down off of here. I always had, <clears throat> I use my draw nuts for my uh, draw bars for the wheel cutters in my K&T a lot. <clears throat> and uh, I may actually have to lower the table down to get this out now. Hmm. Or I can, I can pull that pin out. In fact, actually I could have pulled that pin out and... Um, <clears throat> and then just slide it right out of the clapper box and then use that surface that's probably the smarter way to do it I'm gonna be that that gives me a chance to set this up perfectly square with this and in, in, uh, in the mill uh, I can hold this in a vise and set up a square and I'll <clears throat> I'll set my bit up this is a rough rough shaped bit uh, blank end 
high-speed steel cobalt. I believe this is it actually I can see the last part of cobalt on there. So um, we're going to be creating our cutting edge on this here also. Um, but the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to dial that bore in so that uh, it, the ram is going to be traveling along the surface, the taper surface of that bore. Okay, here's the back side of the clapper box. It has a recess in the back side there. Um, it hinges on a tapered fit pin. And this is the front side. <clears throat> this is the bar I made. Uh, has a receiver and I kind of designed it right after the same this is this is a normal post that holds all your uh, your your tool holders that fit in that receive different angles and uh, and positions for most of your small high-speed bits and uh, so I went ahead and made that so that <clears throat> that slips right inside there and then there's this big flat washer that I've used um, I think it actually came with it, um, but I don't think it's exactly what it was meant to be. It actually has threads on there, um, but it's a good flat washer, uh, ground on both sides. And then our draw nut here. <clears throat> Just when I wanted, to, or not wanted to come on there. Um, Okay, we waited for our air compressor to um, quiet down there. Um, all right, so we got our, our nut on here from the draw bar, and we put a hole in here so we can move it back and forth. We could have put flats in here, but we felt the, uh, um, the hole in here was less, uh, or it, it took away less strength uh, or anything that might cause it to flex or whatever, and, and that's why we didn't put two flats out here and we put a hole in the center. Um, and here's our here's our piece of uh, cobalt that we're going to sharpen up. Now the end of a cobalt bit or high speed bit, they're usually angled a little bit, so you kind of your your relief is already built in there. Now we'll lessen that up slightly right along the leading edge. The the least amount of relief on the on the cutting edge on a shaper holds the edge and makes it stronger. Um, sometimes with too radical of spooning and things like that, you you uh, you will have uh, a grabby uh, bit. So in, in the case where we're coming in on the key and everything else, uh, we want that to last a long time, at least for the whole duration of the cut, which the 1018 material is pretty um, pretty soft in that reference there. So anyway, the against a dark shirt there, you can see the tool bit sitting down. Um, all right, so. We'll be sharpening this up here shortly. First, we're going to go ahead and dial in our part. All right, and that was actually a kind of an easy way to pull that out, and I want to be able to set that bit up just right. And actually, I can pull it out and work it instead of setting setting things in tight bores and tight spots. All right, we have uh, just a regular Starrett mag base right here, and uh, my Starrett button head on here, and and uh, we're just going to put this right down in here like that. And then we're going to use the compound to go ahead and dial until we get our touch down and get our um, button to make contact, which it's making contact right there. We're going to go ahead and tighten up our lock right here because we, we want to start. We know that we were all the way on the back of the stroke there. We should be anyway. Yep, we were. All right, and the belts belts disconnected. We have no drive on here, so we can move this thing by hand. And we've got about thirty-two thousandths uh, plus right there. So we need to we need to lay this out some more. All right, so that's why I gave it a pivot point and a slotted hole uh, back there, so that I can have the positive or negative twist in here. We also, um, I'm going to go ahead and tighten up these nuts here because we're going to be, we're going to be starting to secure this thing. I believe I just, yeah, I didn't tighten them up. Okay. I'm going to go get my other box in wrench and I'll run two of those on there. 
All right, I'm just loosening these up here. And I'm going to use my rawhide maul here to go ahead and tap. And I'm tapping out on it. All right, there's 15 thousandths I've taken out of it. No, I just... Okay. It was uh, come back to minus two. All right. All right, we're about 16 there. Let me bring you in. Brought you in here so you can see. In fact, actually, I'll just I'll sweep it back here. All right, I set zero there, and then coming out here, and this is high. So then and. Only when I tap into an indicator, I want to lift the stroke off of it. But when I'm tapping away from the indicator plunger, um, I'll leave it right there. The other one was almost one to one for coming, so I'm going to tap that back to zero. Okay, we're going to adjust zero. Now I'm just adjusting it with a compound, so we don't have to sit down there and play with that dial get our fingers down in the bores and stuff we're like plus one right there you know if you're about what half a thousand or so within the length or the stroke of the keyway it's going to be fine you always have a little bit of clearance on the top of your keyway all right i'm dialing that back from zero to zero right there that looks good all right now now we go ahead and we tighten up our our jig which I'm pretty happy with my jig so far. It doesn't give me any indication that I got a problem with it. Now the only thing I could have mounted this in the other way and tilted it up and had the open face out here and I could have done all kinds of uh, test fitting um, and do I want to do that anyway? I can always pull my pin real easy in the clapper box and put my part in from the other side. And also too, if there's any problems or whatever, it's going to be pushing this down and it's going to be pushing it away from uh, the cut, which I highly doubt I'm going to be pushing this thing anywhere. All right. Now let's give it a run here. Where are we at now? We're at zero. Okay, we're holding right there. All right, let's just jack it down just so it's in a different position. Okay, I'm going to put it on 15. I like 15 and a half. All right, so I'm uh, I'm going to be happy with that is being dialed in and uh now let's go ahead and back this out of here pull our indicator and uh let's go put an edge on that bit we're gonna install okay i this grinder set up here i've been really liking it, especially i've mounted it on the floor and i bolted it down finally and i can walk right on up to it and um I've just set both of my tables. I didn't set them in any degree. I just kind of eyeball it. All I want is a faint amount of angle. And first it was too radical. I came in and I touched. So we got, we got quite a bit trying to come off of the bottom here and not getting up to the top. Okay, that was my first hit there. Then I moved the tables and then I could start seeing that with just a quick touch I'm taking off of the bottom, but not quite up here. And what I'm trying to do is get back here, create relief here that flares out like a, a cone. Like, you know, like a fishtail. 
but it's going to be barely noticeable when I have my bit stroking back and forth and as it goes and plunges down I want the cutting to be on the on the edge of the corners of the bit and not up here on the side so I want relief uh, on on the side wall I want relief on the bottom but this is a little extreme I want to lessen that angle a little bit so I'm going to be kissing this here off of the front and I'm going to be bringing down so I'm just going to make like a fish tail so I just eyeballed them and I eyeballed them pretty close to the same on both both sides alright we got water in the cup because this does get warm on the fingers small bits are always like that and I'm working back here before I bring it on out to the the uh, leading edge there now I'm not necessarily worried about keeping this exactly 3 8 on the end because I'm going to be measuring my groove as I go and I can sidestep my cutter as long as I got the flat on the bottom is the most important and the relief around all the sides are, are, uh, are more important than that width at the bottom. You can always compensate for Now, let me grab my scale here. We measured our depth and it was like 8 uh, or 9.30 seconds, I believe. 9.30 seconds on the depth here. So we're just kind of making sure that we, we get up the side here far enough. All right, now like, that's like 3 eighths of an inch there and I'm gonna take the same thing over here. That'll be plenty over the top of that. You don't want to get down there and then, then run out of room on your uh, cutter and your relief. All right. So oh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I, that very tip is still virgin there on the width there. So you can see how it's flared back. So it's angled back and angled upward. Very, very slight. All you need is enough to miss. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the other. All right, sometimes your your angles are that you're trying to create are so fine. It sometimes it, it helps to go ahead and take a small square. You're gonna want to play with the end anyway, and you want to make sure that square is there. But you can hold up to a light bulb, and you can look on both sides and match your grind, and also check. Check you make sure that you do have that clearance and it's shaping out the way you want it. That's looking pretty good. All right. Here's the top. There's the virgin little corner there. And still the same thing there. I haven't brought them in to the end yet. That's still three eighths of an inch on the width there. All right, there's the end. It's it's kind of rough. That's just how it comes from the factory. No grind on it at all. Okay, but I'm back far enough on both sides. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and kiss on the end here. trying to go back and forth back and forth because I want all I want to do is just create a slight little grind of a flat there on the end and I'm not really you can see how it tapers on down this way usually that's a sign that you're off on your angle or whatever but this is the way you check and see if you're off on your angle <clears throat> you hold it up to the light again and you can see that yes in fact I am lighter over here than I am here so this is reading pretty close to what I'm off I can put my square in here also but I'd have to set the square a little light pressure and then I can hold that 
up to the light and I just about got it right on the money there. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. <clears throat> now that little bit of angle right there is all you really need. This is relief, you know that that's not going to be rubbing, but you want this to be minimum. The least amount of edge on a straight push shaper tool is going to stay sharper longer. Okay, I'm going to finish kissing on, in on the sides here. Until I get that little corner just about peeked out there. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I think we're pretty well happy there. <clears throat> Whether we do something on the very face of this um, is not necessarily... needed and sometimes and I might <clears throat> sometimes actually put in a center groove in here uh, because we're going to be walking this thing back and forth this is three-eighths of an inch mean diameter meaning it's slightly under I ground the sides just slightly but we're going to be coming out to a three-quarter inch so we're going to be moving this at least three sixteenths of an inch side to side across the bottom to get that width there so we could put a groove in the middle here with relief <clears throat> so that we could come down and then work side to side, come down, work side to side, come down, work side to side. That's, we don't know yet. We'll take a look and see what we need. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to get my stone now just to hit the, because there's a little tiny burr on here uh, from sharpening. And I'm going to knock that off with a stone and then we'll be ready to put this in. Okay, we put our bar back in here. We're, we tightened this in the vise in the other room. What we did is we put the clapper box in the vise of the mill and we took a piece of nice 3 8 coal roll. We put it down in the... Was it this end we put down in there? Maybe it was this end. That was it. Okay, we put, we put this down in and came off the side with a square of the table and, and aligned this straight up and down and tighten our nut. Well, now what we're doing is we're putting the square in here and we're just checking our clapper box that it's square. And uh, we, we loosen this up, we slid our clapper box square. So now that we know the tool bit is gonna be square when we put the, the bit in, all right? So that part of the setting up the bit is all done. And now we're gonna go ahead and before we put the bit in here, we're going to go ahead and move our stroke back into position here. All right. <clears throat> um, we loosen this up. And we pull this about where we want to start. And just lightly tighten this. We're going to cycle this through. So we make sure that the bit is going to be going all the way through the uh, project. And it could go a little bit more. So we can we can go ahead and... We can pull that ram out just a little bit. All right. That's completely coming out this side. Let's take a look and see if it completely clears this side. It does. Plus, plus the thickness of the another bit. 
you want a little bit more time coming back in because that is where you'll adjust your your next stroke in between your strokes is where you'll feed the compound down or the table over uh, either direction okay so you always want to leave yourself enough time in between your strokes um, I'm pretty happy with that all right we're just gonna tighten that up a little bit and uh, I'm, I'm learning slowly to use other tools uh, like that instead of hitting this with the palm um, it doesn't need much though this is a hand lever right here um, all right double check that and we're looking good okay now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to decide our position of our ram you know the farther you put this down just like a compound on the lathe the farther it goes down the more you're gonna be overhanging okay now we're we're not quite level there um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up because the more the more meat of the ram behind your compound your bar and everything the more rigid you're gonna be the stronger you're, you're gonna be this the the less flex and everything else all right so there is there is the optimum uh, amount of material supporting that uh, compound we, we brought the head up here now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this out so we can put the tool bit in here and get a point in in the right direction here and let's get our scale here because we want to go ahead and we want to we want it to be in there but we want it to stick out um enough i like that we'll go ahead and <clears throat> okay and we're real happy we have a square tool that's mounted all square now when we touch off we're going to be finding center of this hole and i'll be showing you how I, I i go about that and we're going to also bring in two indicators and we're going to put an indicator on both sides of the table here so that we can set a zero for our outside to outside um, travel uh, so it's easy to see on this uh on this little shaper and um I mean, we can set our dials here as well uh, and, and go along with that. Um, so I don't have a dial on the up and down here. I only have one on the cross feed and then one on the compound itself. Uh, so we'll be able to judge our, our, our least side to side and our depth that way. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and back this back just a little bit here. And we're... We're still got a half an inch or so here. But what I'm going to do, I think we have room to come up with our table at least a half an inch. Okay, and we're still, we haven't set our, our support yet. And we'll set that after we set the height that we're going to actually go. So I loosen these four holding bolts for the cross slide. And we actually crank this up and we're going to crank it up and we're just eyeballing our clearance in here just wanting it to make it a little closer oh somewhere in there okay i like that all right we're going to lock this down the the depth that we feed down will be all compound action it won't be any of the <clears throat> the cross slide here at all this will be locked solid and after we lock this solid we're going to support that knee out at the end good okay now we want to set this so that's making contact let me move the camera down because you're not gonna see you're not looking at that 
Okay, we're locked up there. Now we're gonna unscrew this foot. This is a support foot. And I have a machine at the bottom. And I think we're just gonna bring it down by hand like that. And then we're gonna bring this up. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go get uh, two nice size wrenches to tighten this up. Okay, I got my uh, little 24 inch crescent wrench and I think we'll put that down here to just hold that right there. Uh, this is inch and five eighths. That's what size these, these nuts are right here. Here we go. Um, I'm not gonna try to put a feeler gauge or anything else down in there. I, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna be positive in there. I could have probably put an indicator up here just to see if it moved it. Um, I'm not gonna bother on any of that. I just know it's there, and I'm not gonna have a lot of deflection down here. And if I start seeing it actually uh, rub along here, because this is old, uh, this is old surface. This hasn't been cleaned or played with um, other than wiping the rust, I mean the, the dust, the rusty dust off, maybe a little oil. Um, and it may leave a little mark going across there. We'll see if it, uh, if it looks like it's giving us any problems um, on here. Actually, we probably, uh, let me bring this up just a little bit so that I can go side to side a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna loosen it off a little bit. It should it should slide without any tension. It should just be there for support, that's all. Alright, that's pretty close. Wanted to just skip. You know what? I'm gonna leave it like that. That's probably gonna be good because there's gonna be a lot of a lot of back and forth here. And it probably wouldn't hurt to put a little oil down here. Alright. I guess that's a good way to find out that you're not giving any ex extra. Okay. There we go. Um, normally I've seen slides and with a little lock here as well. Um, there's a lot of different ways to go about making these right here. This flange pattern I just kind of duplicated off of there. Went and cut the plate out of the plasma cam and uh, made up the nuts and uh, and you know here's a couple quick pictures of that okay we're in midstream there uh, and we're up off of our part here <clears throat> move a couple of these tools out of the way all right we're gonna let the tension down on our machine the most important thing of your machine is to lube it up before uh, you run and I like to actually I've, I've got a little bit squirt in each one of my little oil cups here But I'm gonna let it run for a little bit and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna feed some oil in here and uh, Really let the thing juice up here
Now we're not going to be using any auto feeds or anything else, but I still put a little drop in just the, the linkage is moving back and forth and you want just a little drop in these. This is the main crank pivot right here that I'm putting oil in right now. That was an item I had to completely remachine and fit. It was completely wiped out. And uh, you can hear the gear rack, uh, gear and uh, pinion in there. And they're running pretty good. You know, back in the day, it used to be a guy's job. He was called the oiler, and, and he'd come into the plants and, and fire things off and uh, get them oiled up before a crew would come in or periodically go around and oil up uh, machines while they were running. All right, you can see I got a good flow of oil coming out around that bearing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this and we will wipe that. And when we wipe that, we kind of rub it on the metal parts there too. All right. They, they do drip, I put a couple uh, uh, I put a couple bilge rags along the trough on each side to help soak up oil and stuff like that. Let it flow. It's better off to let it flow than it is to try to be stingy with it. Okay, let's uh, let's get the show on the road. We put a dial indicator here and here so that we'll be able to set zero from side to side so it's a good easy visual. We also moved our or loosened our dial so we can go ahead and set it zero and then we'll probably put a dark uh, sharpie dot on that so that we also um, uh, don't overpass or or get outside the uh, dimension we need to go and we will also go ahead and probably wipe the top of our rail and put one sharpie uh, line on both sides meaning the outside travel, so they'll never be underneath. They should always both be visible. Um, those are just kind of safeties that I'll play in here. All right, now first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go down with our bit until we make contact. Um, and then if we're, if we're starting to scratch, we, we wanna create scratches in here, so reference scratches, because we're trying to find zero. Uh, meaning center of the hub. My head might get in here. Because I, it's important that I see what's going on. I'm moving ever so slowly because I want to only create scratches at this point. I kind of rocked it back and forth by eye and kind of knew that I would be down within inside the width of our key and that's what we want. We want to locate the center before we get out to the width of the key. Okay, we're just barely Okay, we're, we're, we're creating a scratch right there on, on the uh, starboard side. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set, we're gonna set our indicator. We're gonna set our indicator at zero on this side here. 
because if we were feeding that way it would be coming up to zero and we're going to run it and uh, cross over in that direction towards the starboard side until we get a, a scribe on this side here. We were pretty close. We're getting we're getting a scribe right now. That was ten thousand. We moved it ten thousandths to get a scribe on this side. Alright, so I'm moving it halfway in between, which will be five. And I'm gonna set that indicator at zero. And I'm gonna set this indicator at zero for right now. We're we're, we're within 10, 15 thousandths. I don't know what the width was. Uh, let's go ahead and stop it and we'll we'll measure. We never did measure what the width of our actual cutter ended up being. Looks like about 370, about 5,000 under. All right. So that's why I was given a 10 or 15 because I didn't know what that width was right there. All right. So we came back five. We set both of our indicators at zero. And uh, we're going to go ahead and feed it slightly to each side right now and uh, broaden the width in each direction there. Yeah, we got we to gotta move almost 3 16 of an inch theoretically in each direction to create that 3 quarter. Okay, first we're going to feed it towards me. Starting to pull a chip here. I do have my clapper box locked. I didn't talk about that when I put it in there, but I did. I'm just taking like five, four or five at a time. Okay, there's a hundred thousands right there. Um, one of my projects on this will be uh, installing a clutch um, on the drive. And uh, and I would like to have a clutch brake, cl clutch brake. You know, we'll be doing an over center clutch at, at some time. Um, okay. <clears throat> and that is about 475 uh, from the other line there. That's feeling pretty good. All right, let's go. Let's go a hundred thousandths in the other direction now. Okay, we're starting our cut now.
All right, there's a hundred thousandths. When you, uh, my first inter introduction to spring cutting was because of this, the shaper and especially you get in boring bars and stuff like that, you have a lot of spring pressure that actually pushes your tool bit away. So sometimes it takes a couple strokes for it to actually truly catch up to the material in the direction that you're trying to go to. So that's basically what a spring cut is. is. Uh, all right. All right, about 575 on the width. Okay, we're going to go ahead and we're going to continue on. We're going to we're trying to baby it out this way, baby it out that way there till we get kind of the whole width and then we're going to start concentrating um on on down. Now, we need to know um where zero is and we're going to save that for the last um little bit uh meaning we'll we'll probably take this out to like 700 and then we'll be leaving ourselves 25 thousands on the side so that we can touch zero and then we'll know we'll have a depth zero as far as the depth of our keyway um and that was uh i think 8 30 seconds is what we're trying to shoot for to match the other one okay we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna continue taking it out Another fifty thousandths. Once we get to playing with this here and we start taking some real metal, we'll probably put some cutting fluid on it. Okay, that's all the way fifty that way. Now we're going to start heading over to the other side. When you're free floating across there, you can take whatever you safe, feel safe with. Okay, five more will be up to our zero or our 100. There we go. Now another 50,000 off this side. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we're almost 675 right there. 